Now, don't get me wrong, we need to celebrate, and sometimes we need to have an extravagant party and, and, and spare no expense. But, you know, if we were to be having, you know, weekend after weekend, extravagant parties, spending tens of thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands of dollars on expensive wines and foods, you know, for the rich, that's an abomination in the sight of God. You think of Pope Francis after he was made Pope. I was amused he invited some, I think it was some, some Americans, or, or pastors from different parts. I know certainly there were some Americans, so we saw the picture. Uh, he had a dinner with them and then a meeting. And the dinner, it, I think it was a cafeteria or something, and you can see the food, it was just simple fare. And in the picture, you saw Pope Francis pouring water for one of the guests. And I thought to myself, that's the way to do it. I mean, yes, there's a time for extravagant parties. Those are good. There's nothing wrong with those. But we don't have to have an extravagant party and a $3,000 bottle of wine every time we have a get-together, even in the church. Second example of an abomination, or what might be an abomination of the Son of God, is the person who owns not one boat, not two boats, but three boats, and never uses them. And they're expensive boats. You know, you got the $50,000 boat, the $100,000 boat, and the $2,000 boat. Never uses them. And his friends think, oh, this is wonderful. This is, this is the dream. No, it's an abomination in the sight of God. Now, if you're using these boats all the time, or letting your friends use, it, use them, or let poor families use them, wonderful. But if you're, they're just sitting there doing nothing, it's an abomination in the sight of God. Another example is, Excessive gambling. Now again, don't get me wrong. I, have you ever been to the dog races? Have you ever been, oh, wonderful! You know these big greyhound dogs. They run so fast, and, and, and when you go to the dog races, you get pretty close to them. They magnificent creatures racing. I've been to the dog races maybe twice in my life, and I bet I bet two dollars on every race. And there was like, I don't know what, six or seven races. It was so much fun. Nothing wrong with that type of thing. But again, people who are wasting a lot of money on gambling, that's an abomination in the sight of God. Why? Because there's people who can't afford to buy groceries. There's people who are starving to death in our world. And if we're throwing money away as, as if it's, it's worthless, when we could be helping other people, we'll have to give an account for that. And so, so it's so important for us to, to kind of see this perspective. Now, I'm going to let you in on a little secret about St. Mary's parishioners. I, I have access to confidential information, and the reality is, is the parishioners of St. Mary's are extremely generous. We might not all realize that. A guest might come and think, oh, you know, these people, they don't care about the poor. Yes, we do. People at St. Mary's, I don't know, I have no way of knowing, but it could be that the people at St. Mary's are the most generous parishioners in the city. I see, again, like what's going on. People secretly are helping a lot of people. Very generous people at St. Mary's. I know that for a fact. Um, but one thing I would like to see at St. Mary's is at a ministry level, more of the things that we should be doing, celebrating um, in, in terms of the works of God. For example, we should have a ministry here. Someone who's leading it, who, who puts on retreats in our prisons so that all of us, or many of us who, who, who do evangelization, we can go to the prisons maybe once a year or once every two years. Many of us have done that. It, it's a wonderful ministry. We, but, but for that, we need, we need to get organized. We need someone who has that charism, who has an administrative and a leadership gift to kind of head that up. Same thing, um, you know, whatever, helping orphanages in the third world. You know, if there are people who do that, I know Rosa does great work with the children of Paraguay, that, that's what it's called. Wonderful. We need those types of things. We need to celebrate them and, and encourage them. Also, we have the Christmas box thing going on the, uh, right now. And, and uh, it's the same thing, our street people. Ministering to our homeless people, it's complicated. It, it's, you know, it, 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 it's kind of complicated. Just kind of throwing money at people sometimes isn't helping the situation. But the point is, is it would be great 
if St. Mary's Parish was one of the prominent parishes reaching out to our homeless people. I would love to see that happen, you know. Um, and, and again, the, the list could go on. And, and this is very much a question. It's not a question of the pastor isn't doing enough. It's the charisms we need to allow to go forward. Right now, there's someone who's, who's getting into ministry to our vulnerable and isolated um, seniors. I totally support that. You know, maybe in your own life, there's, if you have a heart for a group, working with our young people, extremely important, you know, and so there's all these different areas, charisms, that we need to be, we need to be getting into, and we, we need to see these things as fun. In my last ministry, there was a, 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 a nun, a religious sister, who worked with the, the, the street people, the homeless, and, and people who were in recovery and, and really struggling in life, and, um, and she invited us. To, to minister to them because we were charismatic and she said they need Jesus, they need the Holy Spirit. So we go in with the team and they would, I think we did this about once a month, they would have a potluck and they had a, a nice old home that was donated to them. And so we'd have a little crowd of people and we'd have this nice potluck meal, oftentimes it was outdoors, we just had a great time. And then we would have praise and worship, we would have a teaching. And we typically, you know, about the Lordship of Jesus and the power of Jesus, how to change our lives and to help us. We'd have a testimony, and we brought in some great people who had just powerful testimonies of, of the Lord transforming them. Some people coming out of very dark places in, in, in life, transformation, that we had praise. And we also had prayer. We'd pray over everyone, and sometimes, too, we'd prophesy over every person. We had some people who were really into scripture, and we just, every person as we were praising, we just, we just say, you know, I think the scripture the Lord's been putting on my heart for you is this scripture. We pray over them, kind of a prophetic prayer, and, and sometimes, you know, people are just like, oh my gosh, how did you know? You know, that's exactly what I've been kind of going through and struggling, struggling with or whatever, and the prayer is so powerful. But the point is, is I would love to see St. Mary's be one of the prominent parishes in this city for reaching out to the, the, the struggling and poor in different ways. And, and doing it with style. Making it look fun. Because it is fun. We need to make it look fun. We need to, to have fun doing it. And so, and the thing too is generally, if we are doing these good works, people, they want to support them. People rather spend money on whatever extravagant things. They rather, you know, give to support um, ministries like this. So this is one of my dreams. I hope you share this dream with me. God trusts us with gifts to be used for His glory and the good of other people. May we pray that we pray that we may become responsible for all these and be worthy of his trust. That as a church we may be committed in our ministry to the poor, we pray to the Lord. Lord. That government officials may be responsible and honest in the use of government resources, we pray to the Lord. Lord. That we may overcome avarice by daily acts of generosity, we pray to the Lord. Lord. That the poor and the sick may find support from concerned and kind-hearted citizens, we pray to the Lord. Amen. That the dead may receive the eternal riches of heaven, we pray to the Lord. Amen. We pray today for Mark Lopato, offered by Beth and Maria Lobo, we pray to the Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, help us that we may not be carried away by the lure of money, but seek the real wealth of your kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray for every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord of Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lord.
the spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Renewed with this heavenly food, we humbly implore you, O Lord, that having received your Son, born of the tender virgin, under sacramental signs, we may profess him in words and hold fast to him in peace, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Lord, be with you. Bow your heads for the blessing. Heavenly Father, pour out your love upon your children. Heavenly Father, pour out the fire of the Holy Spirit into the hearts of your children this day. Rekindle, Lord, the fire and the light of the Holy Spirit. Lord, let this blessing bring your power and dispel the darkness. Lord, let this blessing bring healing to all who receive this blessing. Lord, through this blessing we ask you to heal the sin, to set the captives free, to make your children new. Lord, pour out your spirit even now as we pray. Lord, let your spirit overwhelm us with his goodness and his wonderful presence. And may the blessing of Almighty God descend upon you now, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and remain with you forever. Amen. As ascended, go in peace. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in God. We are safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God be with you and we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the blood of God. Cast into hell, Satan, and all the evil spirits who wander down to our world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. In the Queen of